Yesterday, the Department of Basic Education and its research partner, the Human Science Research Council, that's the S, uh, HSRC, released the results of the 2015 Trends in International Mathematics and Science Study. The study was developed by the International Association for the Evaluation of Educational Achievement, IEA and is a cross-national assessment of the mathematics and science levels of learners from various participating countries. Uh, from our Pretoria studios, we're joined by the lead researcher for the South African sample, and that's Dr. Vijay Reddy uh, from the HS, uh, HSRC. So good to have you. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Leanne. Now, what is the express purpose of the study and the role of the HSRC in all of this? Well, we participate in international studies in order to establish our performance in relation to other countries. We have been participating since 1995, and this allows us to track our performance over a long term. Uh, this is a trend in international mathematics and science study, and critical to this is to examine um, and track and monitor the education, the health of the education system to see uh, whether our achievement scores uh, improve or not and also by asking relevant background information to try to explore the, uh, or to try to provide some sort of explanations for the performance. So you've been in charge of the study since 2003 and uh, obviously comparing ourselves to other countries. Are we improving? How are we doing? This time in 2015, we uh, participated at the grade 9 and the grade 5 level. At the grade 9 level, and we have data from 2003, 2011 and 2015. If we look at our mathematics achievement, in 2000 and from 2003 to 2011, we improved by 87 TIMS points. And from 2011 to 2015, we improved by 20 points. This means that from 2003 to 2015, the country improved by about 87 points. Translated into terms that, that are more uh, understandable, it means that the average level of our country's performance improved by two grade levels. Okay. And that is an, uh, an achievement and this achievement of 87 point improvement, um, it was the South Africa achieved the, the biggest improvement. But of course, it was that we were starting from a very low baseline. Yeah. So I'm looking a, a, a little bit in depth into it and seeing where South Africa scored. So we scored more at the lower end of the spectrum, if I'm not mistaken, um, a, among countries such as Morocco, Jordan and Kuwait, registering a slight improvement from very low to low. Um, we're sitting at around about 372, but in comparison for grade 9 math, Singapore is at 621. So, I mean, these are, these, are, these are big gaps. These are massive gaps we're talking about. Absolutely. Um, and we can uh, look at the results in one of two ways. What is the gap between us and the top performing East Asian countries who are sitting at 600? And of course, all of us would aspire to be higher. Or we could look at it from the point that we started off uh, in 1995 and uh, uh, in 1995, 1999, 2003, the, whole, the system didn't shift with regard to educational achievement. And in 2003, our score was 285. Yeah. And this has now gone to 372. So yes, we are improving. And there is a still a long way to go for South Africa to uh, achieve its desired levels and the kinds of levels that will um, support uh, the kind of economy and society that we want. Yeah. You know, what's also quite disturbing and, and just reading a little bit more into it is that it's not that the government is not coming to the party because there are many I mean, the amount of money that is being budgeted into this and trying to help in the developmental phases of the children. I mean, we're looking at uh, approximately 663 million rand of the budget uh, is going for, you know, into the social development. It was allocated over the next three years to get 
more young children into preschools and help them. But it seems like it's, it's not working as well as one was, would expect it to work. What do we need to see more going on in our schools, in preschool, uh, to try and get these levels even higher at a faster rate? Mm. Absolutely. I think uh, when we looked at the grade five results, and this was a study that South Africa participated the first time. And as you rightly say, there's been um, tremendous, uh, our, our grade R participation or participation in pre-grade one activities is now about 90%. And again, South Africa at the grade uh, five level um, scored around 376 this time we asked parents what were the educational activities at the home that they uh, undertook with their, with, their, with their children. We were able to establish some patterns and there is a big difference in the kinds of educational activities in the home for learners that attended no fee schools, that's quintile one, two and three, or the fee paying schools, quintile four and five, and independent schools. So of course, um, educational levels are vastly different. Yeah, yeah. What we also found, which was um, a surprise and a bit of a disappointment for us, is that students that, or learners that do go to no fee schools did attend preschool activities. But in that case, where there's been a big increase in access, it seems that the quality of engagements within these institutions does not give this, the learner that's attending those uh, institutions any boost in educational achievement than those that don't. Yeah. Conversely, we found that in fee-paying schools, in the more affluent schools, that they attending these uh, institutions gave them a bigger boost and their scores were increased. Yeah. You know, yeah. leading us to the whole question about quality. So access has been achieved, but we need to focus far more in terms of quality of engagements Indeed. inside schools, inside institutions, so that uh, we uh, perform at a level that meets the investments that have been made. There you go. Let's, uh, let's leave it there for this morning. Thanks for giving us a glimpse into this research that was conducted. Dr. Vijay Reddy is the executive director in charge of the study at the HSRC. Just to give you background, around 12,500 learners, 330 mathematics and science teachers from 292 schools did participate in this trends in international mathematics and science study. It's called T-I-M-S-S. -S. You can have a look for that and find the results. All right, there you go. It's seven o'clock.